Hey guys, today I'm going to repaste the HP Victus. Before going forward, I just want you to know that the temperatures are fine on this and it's just a test. The product I'm going to use is Honeywell PTM7950. I know you've heard of it. I made the purchase on Amazon and it took about a few days to arrive and came in this box. It kind of threw me off as it says PTM7950 40X followed by SSD M.2. I was like, what? I was already thinking I got scammed and was pretty upset. Anyway, inside we have five rubbers for your fingers, a screwdriver, a brush, a plastic spreader, alcohol pads, and grip tape. In the bottom of the box was a thin packet. This contained the supposed PTM. It read 40 by 80 by 0.25 millimeters. Sliding out the packet, a plastic pouch containing the PTM was inside. It was soft and brought back nightmares on applying it on previous machines. Anyway, let's remove these eight screws from the back of the laptop. I'm going to be using a pH zero bit. Remember that the two screws on the top left and right are the longer screws. Once you remove the screws, take a pry tool and enter from the rear, then work your way around. It should separate pretty easily. I say this all the time, but play it safe. When going in your laptop, it's very sensitive and can be damaged easily from static. So take the usual precautions, all right? Now, let's disconnect the battery from the laptop. Next, disconnect the fans from the board. Next, we are going to remove six screws, three for each fan. For the right side fan, you will have to disconnect the AC power cable. Once it's disconnected, it will easily come out. I tried to remove the left side fan, but it would not budge. Actually, you can leave it in, which will still allow you to do what you need. Let's move along and loosen up the seven screws on the heatsink. These screws will not come out all the way. If you try and lift the heatsink and it will not move, try checking the screws again and make sure they are loosened. If you try and force it, you could bend and damage your heatsink. Since this machine is pretty new, everything looks good and clean. There's plenty of thermal grease and liquid thermal pad application on the heatsink. I will not be replacing the liquid thermal pad. I'm going to start off using a paper towel and cleaning the CPU. You can also use some isopropyl alcohol as well. Next, I'm going to clean the GPU. Because I wasn't replacing the liquid thermal pad, it made it somewhat challenging as I touched the pads with my gloves several times. Get the processors nice and clean. The area around them doesn't have to be perfect. Don't forget to clean the heatsink. Those interested, the CPU size is approximately 22.34 by 9.66 millimeters. The GPU is approximately 11.55 by 12.02 millimeters. Now the hard part. When cutting the PTM, I personally cut it a little long so it hangs over just a bit. When you have everything cut, Use the grip tape on both sides so you can remove the plastic protection. This is the most difficult part of the whole process, I'm telling you. If you find it difficult to remove, try putting it in a fridge for about five minutes to harden it up. You could also use a sewing needle or blade to try and remove the plastic on the PTM. When I tried to remove the top layer on the CPU, it ripped. So I had to try and come from a different angle. When I was applying it to the GPU, 
I had to use a blade as the grip tape was just not working. When you are finished, slowly put the heat sink back on. The heat sink has numbers by the screws in which you can use for the order of tightening. When finished, put the fan back in along with the screws and connect the AC cable. Plug in the fan. On the other side, put the screws back in and connect the fan back to the board. Connect the battery cable and replace the back cover. Check the machine on all sides and make sure everything is flush. Give it a press on all sides. More than likely, you will hear some clicks. Make sure all eight screws are put back in place. Again, when you are done, go around the machine and make sure everything is nice and flush, all right? Moving on, I have three graphs for you. The first is the stock temperatures. The second is after repaste, and the third is after repaste with the power limit increase set to 130. I ran the stress test in ADA64 with CPU, FPU, and cache check. I ran the test for 11 minutes and then let the CPU cool for 5 minutes. The laptop power plan was set to performance in the Omen Gaming Hub, and the fan was set to auto. Comparing to the before and after, you will notice that both were power throttling. This is not from temperatures. Maximum temp for the CPU package using PTM was 83C, while before it was 90C, making this a seven degree decrease. Great. Average temp for stock was 77C, while after repaste it was 68C, making a nine degree decrease. For wattage, both started in the 100 watt power range, but as soon as the power throttling start, they both operated in the 80 to 90 watt range. The last graph, I used throttle stop to set PL1 to 130 to stop the power throttling. The CPU was able to run in the 100 watt range while keeping a temperature in the 70s. Also, the clock speed, temperature, and wattage graph is more stable. It's a pretty good looking line. Having the CPU run faster, depending on the game translates to more FPS. One more thing, there is no undervote applied. So with that said, I'm pleased with the results of the Honeywell PTM7950. Temps decreased and should only get better. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.